I'm a mom. I'm a mom. So this is Mom to Mom. So this is Mom to Mom. But the good news is Dr. Margot Jaco, the Chief Care Officer at the Juniper Center, uh, is a mom and a licensed clinical psychologist. That's been very handy. It does, especially when we have burning questions about things like drugs. Um, because kids sometimes do drugs, and that's probably one of the biggest nightmares of parents. Yeah. So, what? Yeah, drugs, pregnancy, alcohol, oh God, use, no, no, driving, crap. Yeah, I mean, where do we? Where oh my do we God, <laughs> my hyperventilating. <I> know, right? <laughs> my kids are right on the cusp mm, of that, so I yeah. have all this clinical knowledge and hope it. Oh my gosh, does us some good. Yeah. So I know, like, kids get to high school immediately. You're like, don't do drugs, don't drink. But now they're already 16, 17. Like, they're kind of grown and have their ideas about things. When should parents start talking to kids about drugs and how? Yeah. What should we do? Well, so there's a lot of um, diversity in terms of opinions. Some experts will say, start speaking to your kids when they're six. Other experts will say. Start talking to your kids when they're 12. Other experts will say mm. once they hit high school. This what is, would you talk to a six-year-old about? Well, with a six-year-old, what you want to talk about, and usually if there's a context, mm. if they have heard something or they have seen something, then you want to be able to have a conversation like, why was Uncle Joe acting so funny the other night? Mm. Uncle Joe drank a little too much wine and people look kind of funny and do funny things, and but it's not really funny. Mm. Um it's not good for them. That was a little too much. You know, we love Uncle Joe. Well, I'm going to tell Uncle Joe he shouldn't do that. Okay, well, you can tell Uncle Joe <laughs> he shouldn't do that. So mm-hmm. if there's a context, mm-hmm. if the child asks, you don't want to blow the question off. So okay. if there's some reason they're asking you, answer it. Mm-hmm. And answer it honestly in six-year-old language. Because mm-hmm. oftentimes those questions, actually, are, there's no assumption behind it. They right. really are asking for factual information. They're just asking yeah. for the facts. Mm-hmm. And so if you can start answering with fact back from the time they're young, that really mm-hmm. sets the stage down the road. I can tell you from the time my kids were fairly young, we talked about drugs and alcohol, mm-hmm. and often there was some context. So I would say probably by the time they were nine or 10, we were talking about it just as a thing. Mm -hmm. Because as kids start getting into middle school, which can be 11 years old, they're already vaping. Vaping is at an unbelievable high in middle middle school and in high school at this Mm -hmm. point. So to have those conversations early on, you need to get your kid prepared. And it's not when they're in the soup. You want to talk to them before they're in the soup. You want to talk to them in a preventative way. So we would say things like, Um, these are some of the drugs that kids might be doing when you get to junior high. I don't want you to be worried about it, but you might see somebody doing something that looks like this. You might see somebody who's doing something that looks like that. I can tell you, I had a story when I was in junior high, a kid ran out onto the playground. This was 1970 something, (laughs) ran out onto the playground and tied off his arm and injected heroin into his arm. So we like to think that this is more dangerous now, right on the schoolyard. And this is a Chicago Mm. public school in a, you know, middle Mm. class neighborhood. And these things have been going Mm. on forever. I had no idea what was happening. Mm. So I prepared my kids of saying, these are some things you might see. What would you guys want to do if you saw that? Mm. I'd go tell a teacher. Okay, that sounds like a great idea. What if they tell you they wanted you to do it too? No, I'm not stupid. I'm not Mm going to do that. Great. Well, as they get older, I'd say, you know, we'd have this conversation Mm -hmm. again about something. Mm -hmm. And they'd say, I'd say, well, what are you going to do? And they'd say, well, I'm not going to do that. I'm not stupid. And I'd say, well, you know, they're going to tell you it's no big deal Mm -hmm. that your parents have told you a bunch of things that aren't true. Sure, and now they're listening to kids more. But the other thing I think as they get older that they may look at you and go, well, what did you do? Did you oh, ever yeah. try this stuff? So Absolutely. some parents I know tell everything because they feel like that's that being honest is the most important mm-hmm. thing. Other parents say, I knew what I was doing or I could manage it. Things are harder now, so I don't want to mm-hmm. tell them anything. Mm-hmm. What's your advice on whether to tell your experience or not? <sighs> It depends on your experience. Mm -hmm. If you've done things that you wouldn't want your child really to know about you. Well, technically, I mean, it's all 
for my friend, it's probably all things you wouldn't want your kids to do. Though. It's like probably your, right? your parents. It gives you perspective on your own parents. Would probably yes, be freaking absolutely. out. Absolutely. So yeah, it's. I mean, you don't want your kids to do drugs. You don't want your kids to do drugs. My kids have asked me mm. that question, and they've asked me, "Did I ever get drunk?" I said, "Yes, I did." It felt like this. My mm. head spun. I got sick. I felt horrible the next day. My mouth was all dry. I was 14. Somebody told me it was mm. no big deal. I spent the night at a friend's house. I have not consumed vodka since then. It was mm. such a bad experience. So I'm sure my parents would be really happy about that. <laughs> um, so I have shared with them that story because it happened when I was younger. Mm. And other stories... I wouldn't necessarily mm -hmm. tell. And it about. sounds like you shared the lesson that you learned along with the story. Right. It's not a mm -hmm. war story. Yeah. It's never intended to mm -hmm. be a war story. I have definitely talked about things I've seen other people do. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I was at a party and I saw this happen and I saw somebody mm -hmm. put something into a girl's drink and she was passed out and I was really mm -hmm. worried about her. You got to be careful mm -hmm. about that. Don't ever, if somebody said, you mm -hmm. don't ever go to a party and set your drink down. I've started having those conversations with my high schooler now. Mm -hmm. Don't ever set your drink down. You know, the other one that's really huge on that one, and I know we talked to our son about this when he was way young, before hopefully he would have even thought about drinking mm -hmm. or things like that, but the whole issue of safety. What do you do if a friend drinks too much? And we always said, no matter what, if you are at a party and you feel exactly. uncomfortable, you can call us. We that's will right. not be upset. And we've also said, if you have a friend who's who's drank too much or is overindulged, that you need to stay with that friend because they can actually die. They could die. Yeah, That's right. And when we've said that, the, mm -hmm. the biggest part of the conversation that we've had is twofold. One mm -hmm. is that mm -hmm. you call me anytime, anywhere, any time of day or night. If you need me, I will drop what I'm doing and I will mm -hmm. come and get you. I don't mean like if your stomach hurts and you have a math test. I'm talking about, you know, mm -hmm. really like serious things, like you're at a party and somebody's doing mm -hmm. something and you're nervous. And I'll take that friend too. And mm -hmm. I'll just drop them off at their house. Um, you know, I want them to feel like they can call me for sure. Mm -hmm. So here's the thing. You're going to get your child. You've told them to call you if they're ever in danger and you promise you won't be mad, except that you're about to explode. Yeah, you're really mad. Right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So what do you do? Well, this is where you getting back into a calm head is really important for you and for your kid and the mm -hmm. relationship with your kid. Because guess what? If you get they get in the car and you yell at them or you're seething, they will not call you again. And you want them to feel like they can call you. Mm -hmm. So you need to be doing breathing, meditating on the way there, whatever you need to do to get mm -hmm. to calm. And you do not have to handle the situation in the mm -hmm. moment. There's nothing on fire here. They've done the right thing. They've called mm -hmm. you. When they get in the car, tell them, I'm so glad you called. Mm -hmm. Why don't we talk more about it tomorrow? Mm -hmm. I'm sure but do you tired. punish them later? Because even that, if you punish them, I mean, they've done something that breaks the rules, but you told them to call you and they yep. did. Thank God. Yeah. Um, but do you punish them later? Because if won't they not call you next then time? Then they won't call you. That's mm -hmm. why these things are tricky. The only circumstance where I can imagine that a punishment would occur, mm -hmm. uh, let's assume the police are the ones who have called me. <laughs> well, that's different. Then that's, there hasn't been the, right. the trust factor. Uh, right. <laughs> or they yeah. have. And, and again, a lot of these, I'm a big believer whenever possible for there to be a natural consequence. If mm -hmm. they're sick the next day, I will be keeping my fingers crossed. You are sick. Mm -hmm. I don't want them to be throwing up. I don't want them obviously feel to be so sick. They'll feel so yeah. lousy. And we'll say, well, you know, you made this choice. This is what happens when you make this choice. Yeah. I say, don't do this. And A, they're not going to call me again. And B, again, they're going to need to push away from me. This is mm -hmm. another way if I'm reactive, this is a mm -hmm. thing for them to rebel about. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we need to be the safe haven, that they, they know that they can call us no matter what, even as they're separating and trying things. That's right, especially yeah. when they're separating from yeah. us and trying things, mm -hmm. especially.